very warm tribute to my colleagues, uh, my fellow uh, commissioners and committee members and our staff. They were outstanding, outstanding. And it was wonderful to be the captain of an outstanding team. And we got people from Holland who assisted us uh, in our investigative unit. Uh, so we got help from all over the world because the world wanted to see us succeed in this experiment. But then, and the, it, it's lips, uh, it seems to be, the, there seems to be a, lo a lot of difference between what you now describe and then the, the, the terrible past and the things, the truth that came out. Uh, isn't, isn't it a, a kind of contradiction almost? In, in what sense? I mean, we are saying uh, we recognize that there is a lot of evil, but we also recognize that there is a lot of good. Uh, and we, we, we have no doubt at all that ultimately, because God is in charge, uh, good will come out of evil, just as good came out of the evil of the cross. Uh, that, I mean, the cross is one of the most awful instruments, and yet it becomes the source of life. An instrument of death becomes the instrument and the source of life. W what was the most difficult of the process for you? Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, I found uh, the the, the thing that caused me a lot of anguish, really, ultimately was the reaction of white people generally in South Africa to uh, reject the commission, uh, to um, try to discredit the commission. Uh, but one understood as well that uh, that was one of the reactions at the revelations, you know, that so much evil was committed really on their behalf and they couldn't handle it. They, they handled it by denial. Some people said all this truth worsened the situation. You know, when a husband and wife have quarreled because one of them is unfaithful, the truth, when it comes out, can almost alienate them. It can even lead to divorce. But it could also be something that strengthens their relationship if they handle it. But initially, the truth shocks. The truth traumatizes. A and uh, it's not easy. It's never easy to forgive. It's never easy to be reconciled. It's, it's not cheap. Uh, you know, it cost God the death of his son. Did the committee catch enough so-called big fish? Um, we would have obviously preferred uh, it if Everybody who knew they had done wrong things had come voluntarily to the commission. Um, I think we have got enough to be able to say this is as accurate a picture as we can ever hope to get about the past. Um, we, we would have hoped that more people, for, especially from the defense force, could have come. We got a lot. We got a lot from the police, uh, and I would say it's as much as you could ever have hoped, you know, when you think, when you look at Chile. But if you look at, for example, the reaction of uh, uh, P.W. Bota? Yes, the, the, the fact is, you see, that when he ignored a subpoena, we handed it over to the courts. There's not much you can do short of saying we should have tortured him. 
But you see, we were, we were saying we want to cultivate a new culture of respect for human rights. And even Mr. Border has rights. And we must honor her, them, even if it is rights that he denied many of his opponents when he was in power. And on the other hand, how do you look at um, the case of Ms. Winnie Mandela? For those people who keep claiming that the commission was uh, biased in favor of the ANC, that demonstrates, I mean, she is the only person who had an 11-day inquiry. Nobody else have we called forward and, and, uh, and subjected to that kind of grilling. And if the commission had in fact been the ANC's lapdog, that's the last thing you would have done. You found out so much truth. Isn't it going to be a heavy burden for the future? The burden would be if you pretended that it wasn't there. Now it has come out into the open. It will not fester. The trouble is with many countries. You look at many countries. Look at the United States. They have not dealt with the legacy of slavery. They have not dealt with the legacy of the Civil War. And so constantly they get uh, eruptions of race incidents which in part can be attributed to, the, to this past with which they have not really dealt. And in South Africa, the English and the Afrikaners have not dealt with the pain of the Anglo-Boer War. And constantly, uh, it, it keeps erupting to remind them it is there. How is post-TRC South Africa going to be like? scintillating success uh, one day. But it, it is going to be a process. Uh, people have to, to deal with the truth. And the truth, as you were saying in one of the questions, uh, is not always uh, an enjoyable exercise. Uh, and, and we are going to have to try to come to terms with our truth. But we have tried. And I think the world is looking on and saying, maybe here is a way of dealing with a post-conflict, a post-repression period. Uh, this may be the most viable way. And people in Ireland are saying, maybe this is going to be the way for us. Uh, people in Rwanda are saying maybe this is the way that we're going to have to handle. Uh, and, and I, uh, I mean, we are not saying we have a blueprint. We are saying here is something. There are mistakes, there are achievements. Choose what may be of use for yourselves. You're now going to enjoy your Earned pension? <laughs> yes, at the moment I, I'm, I'm much looking forward to uh, the time at this uh, University Emory here. They are spoiling me. They are very generous. Uh, and my wife and I are hoping that we will have time to relax. Archie Bishop Tutu, thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you.